Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Welcome to part seven in our series of building a discount bushcraft kit. You can see that I have my single shot H&R 12 gauge. These can be picked up at most gun shows for less than $100. They can be picked up at Walmart for right at $100. Or you can pick these up many, many times at garage sales and rummage sales for well less than $50. I actually picked this one up at a gun show about two months ago for $60. It is an H&R 3 inch 12 gauge modified choke. Very handy gun to have and if I were to pick you know one cheap gun that I was going to have in the woods for a survival or wilderness self reliance situation it would either be a 22 rifle or a 12 gauge. Um, kind of a hard choice between those two 22 rifles will kill a lot of things but 12 gauges will kill anything with a slug. So. I choose to carry the 12 gauge for my, you know, discount bushcraft kit. And what we're going to talk about today is making our blanket into a backpack. All right, so what we want to talk about today is this blanket pack that I'm wearing. Now, I have seen videos on YouTube of Hudson Bay style bed rolls and things like that. And understand that those were very popular back in the fur trade era. Even in the long hunter era, they carried things like that. But this was also an option that was used, and from my personal experience, and I want to show you what I think is the best way to do this, there's a lot of tricks and tips that you can know and learn about bedroll type setups that you're not going to know unless you've actually went out and done this stuff. Anybody can throw a blanket on the ground and roll some stuff up in it and say, this is my bedroll. But there's ways and tricks to do it that you only learn from experience in doing it. So I'm going to show you some of those tricks of the trade today from using this type of setup for several years doing, doing reenactments of the 1760s. Um, and I think this is one of the better ways to carry your equipment if you do not have a backpack. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Stay with me. All right, so looking at this thing that we're wearing here, we're wearing it right now backpack style. But the way it's set up, it could also be worn over one shoulder or the other. The problem with the one shoulder style blanket rig or Hudson Bay pack as some people call it is that all your weight is bearing one sh on one shoulder all the time. Now sometimes you don't mind that and you can switch it back and forth not a big deal but by setting it up the way I have you can wear it very much like a school backpack type style and it distributes the weight evenly. Now there's some other important factors in this thing that we need to look at as far as accessibility to your equipment. We're going to look at that as we take this thing down and put it back together right now. Alright, so let's look at this for a minute from the outside and understand accessibility to our equipment as we go through this. So we're going through this kind of in a reverse order. What I've got right here, you can see the head of my axe is sticking out right here. Now the reason for that is there's no cover on this axe head. So I don't want to get cut by this axe head right now until I can make a cover for it. So by sticking it in this seam right here, I have ready access to that axe if I need it by pulling it straight out the top. Now if I had a cover on it, maybe i put it on the outside. A lot of people do do that and that's fine. But this is a very easy way to carry it and get to it very quickly is to have it in this pouch right here, this envelope. Now the other thing that I have in this envelope for quick access is a trash bag that I've added to this kit today and that just gives me some rain gear if I need it very quickly. And those are both in what I call the envelope portion of this bedroll. Now we bought two bungee cords and I utilize those for my shelter but I also utilize them on my bedroll and I just attach them on the ends and we'll talk about that when we put this back together. So if we take these off of here then we can look at this bedroll close up and that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so I'm just going to take both of these bungee cords off of here and leave this bedroll lay bundled up right here. Now, when we had this on, remember that we had an envelope right here on this side. Accessibility to your equipment that you need in emergencies or that you need quickly is the most important key to putting one of these together. Like you saw, we had immediate access to our axe we had immediate access to some type of rain gear without opening or undoing anything. And that's very important because you don't want to have to take this thing apart to get to this stuff. Now, 
The way we've got this set up, if we just take the rope off of it for now and undo it, just like this, and set it aside. Now, if we had to get to equipment quickly, we still have this thing fairly well rolled up, as you can see. We peel this back, and we have equipment that's immediately accessible to us very quickly. We have our rope. We have a roll right here that's in our bandana that contains all of our tools, including our utensils, our mini saw, our vice grips, our four-in-one. Everything is in that, and it's immediately accessible right at the opening or the onset of having to open up this bedroll. Then if I peel it back a little further, I have basically the majority of the contents are right here. I've got my fire kit quick and ready. It's stored in that bowl and it's ready to go. I have my ditty bag right here that has all of my first aid essentials in it and all the rest of that stuff that we talked about yesterday. And then I have my cooking bowl. Now I've added this rag and this is basically a head rag very similar to the ones people wear after they apply this pomade to their hair. But it is almost made out of like stocking material and it's stretchy. So I can use this for a lot of things from filtration to over my head. I can use this for a scarf. I can use it for a type of camouflage. I can use it for a lot of things and it doesn't weigh anything. It's almost like silky and it doesn't weigh anything. So it works really well and I just keep it in the kit for that reason because it's a good multi-purpose item and it costs like $1.50 at the uh, Dollar General store. So all of that stuff goes right inside here. The only thing that we do not have in this kit from our original kit, we do not have our buck saw blade, and we do not have our backpack, and we do not have our flashlight. Those could the flashlight could be put in here easy enough. I just decided that it wasn't really that necessary, um, and I took it out of a light travel kit like this because I'm not carrying a pack. The buck saw blade is too long to fit in this roll. However, we do have the small saw if we need an emergency saw, and we have our axe. So we're not hurting ourselves any by leaving the saw, leaving the buck saw back so this is basically the contents of our bedroll and our kit of everything we had now a couple of additions I'm making to this first aid kit I want to talk to you about some of this comes from viewer suggestions some of it is things that I had already thought about putting in here obviously in later videos so we can show development of this kit uh, a domes bar a magnesium flint striking bar that we picked up from Walmart for six dollars is now in our kit for fire starting. The other things that I wanted to add to it today were a piece of three foot by three foot aluminum foil. We can just put that right in the bottom. It's not going to take up any more room really. And we can use that for a covering of our dish if we want to to give us a cover. We can use it inside to cook in if we're cooking uh, some kind of a, a muffin mix of some kind so we don't have to dirty up our bowl. We can cook it right inside there and make a little oven. To the first aid kit I want to add a female pad which is very good for bandage and absorbency it's also good fire starting material in emergency and there's two large safety pins attached to that and a tampon which is very good for sealing puncture type wounds or bullet holes and I will put those inside this ditty bag or first aid kit bag that we have here with our other essentials in it and then I'll put all that back inside here and again it all fits right inside of this bowl so if we set those aside, the only other things that we really have in this kit, when we roll it out, all we have left in here at the moment is our shelter tarp and our blanket. Now, the reason the blanket is on the outside, and I've had this discussion in the past with people when we uh, did things like this. In my early videos, I carried a bedroll a lot. And one of the things that you need to understand is, number one, these tarps are pretty noisy. Okay, and because of that, you don't want that when you're traveling through the woods light and trying to hunt. The other thing is if you put these down on the snow, they're very slippery. So you don't want that. The other thing is your, your tarp is going to tear up easier as far as abrasion goes than your wool blanket. So if you're catching this thing on snags and sticks and bark of trees and things like that, you're going to tear this up faster than you're going to tear up your wool blanket. If you get a hole in this wool blanket, it's still going to be warm. If you get a hole in this tarp, it's not going to be waterproof anymore. So I always put my tarp on the inside. Now, Okay, so the things that I would probably want to add to this bedroll before we discuss the rest of this 
uh, very quickly within the next few days, especially if I was going to use this in the woods, which we are going to try to do. Um, I would try to add a $15 emergency reversible space blanket to this. Number one, for a moisture barrier on the ground, and number two, because the reflective side will reflect heat back up on us when we are sleeping. The second thing I would want to add to this would probably be a Wooby or a military poncho liner. And those are very good, lightweight items that will give you more insulation to go with your wool blanket. Now, somebody asked me yesterday about using a Wooby for outerwear, like I showed this wool blanket yesterday. And the reason I say probably not to do that is, number one, they're made out of a silanine material, and they are stuffed with a synthetic baffling on the inside for insulation. And if you get them around fire and they get sparks on them, you'll burn holes straight through them just in seconds. Um, you don't want to get them around too many snags and things either, or they will catch on things. So you're better off with the wool blanket probably for the outerwear, but the Wooby is a very good piece of equipment to have in here to use as extra insulation and covering. So I'll probably want to put those two items in here over the next couple days and add that to our sleep system. Now, when you get down toward the bottom of this bedroll, and remember we're starting from the top. Let me adjust this camera just a little bit here. When you get toward the end of this bedroll, and I don't have any in here right now, but this is the point where you would put your clothing, would be down at the bottom, because that's the last thing you'll probably need to access. So you'll put you know, if you have a spare pair of socks that you're going to wear that night and maybe a spare synthetic long sleeve shirt that you're going to wear underneath as a moisture barrier, those are the things that you're going to put down in the bottom of this. And the only thing we did to put this together really was we folded our blanket basically in half and then we folded it over one third to one third over the top of our tarp. Just like this. Then we put our equipment, we peeled it back, and we put our equipment on the inside. So our clothing would be down at the bottom of this to get to at the end of the day. But up here is where we want the stuff that we need to get to immediately. All right? We've got our cotton cord, and we could take this white cord and go buy a dollar box of writ dye, and we could have this green in the washing machine in about 10 minutes. So just because it's white doesn't mean it has to stay that way. You'll just have to go through the hassle of undoing it to make it another color. So I've put those items up at the front and then of course my cook kit and fire kit because fire is always important to have right away. And those things go at the top of the kit. We're pretty close to the top. I put them about two thirds of the way up because I'm going to fold the top over anyway in the end. Then I leave my bag and my axe out last because those are going to be items that I want to get to from the outside in the envelope that I create. So then what I do is I fold that back over just like this. So it's basically folded in thirds, a little bit less than thirds because you've got a flap right here. And that flap doesn't really do anything, doesn't really matter. You can fold it all the way in thirds if you want to. This just makes it a little bit longer package, not going to hurt anything. But you don't really want it too wide either because when you get it too wide, your stuff's going to flop around on the inside. And then of course, we've got our bungee straps underneath. So the first thing I usually do is I'll fold up just a little bit of the bottom here, probably, you know, say that much, and I'll do the same thing on the front side. I'll fold that up, and that's where my ties and tie-offs are at that we sewed on yesterday, and I'll leave that just like that, and I'll fold that right to the edge of my equipment. Then I'll just take my rope, I'll fold it completely in half, I want to adjust this camera just a little bit more for you guys so you can see this. back this up just a shade here there we go all right so now I've got my two ends folded up I've got my equipment at the top the bottom is where I'm gonna put my rope and all I'm gonna do is fold it in half and leave a loop out here and what I usually do with that is I usually tuck it right in my fold right there just like that then I'll begin to roll this up just like this now right here's my equipment I'm going to fold right up on top of that, and right here is where my envelope gets formed. So I'll tuck 
the two items I may need to get to fast in that envelope and roll that over. And then I'll use my bungee cords to cinch it down. And the way I'll do that is I'll just hook that bungee cord in and pull it back against itself just like this. Pull it down tight. Run it all the way around. Back to the other side where I had the loop. And hook it right in there in opposite directions just like that then I'll do the same thing on the bottom side and you can see that my axe head is now hung up on this bungee cord so it's not going to slip and fall out if I'm running or if I get in a hurry and I'll do the same thing down here and I want my bungee cords in the same spot right here by my pot because I know that's going to be on the outside of my pack. And I'll come around with that and hook it in to the other loop the opposite direction just like I did the top one. Okay so once I've got my bedroll rolled up here and I've got my axe on one side my tin full of equipment on the other side and either one of these sides can go against my back it doesn't matter because they're flat but here's where my bungees are so this is what I want against my back. Now I'm just going to take these two ropes Fold them over, put them through this loop, and tie them off at whatever length I think is going to be appropriate to where this is a backpack. Okay, so we've got our backpack back on now, and let's talk about our water container real quick because we didn't talk about that. What we did with our water container was we just tied a loop on it right there, and we just put it on our belt. We just tied it around the outside on the top. And we just hung it right off our belt so it's easily there for access if we need it while we're walking. We don't need to connect that or put that in our pack. We can hang that right on the side of our body. Okay, this has been uh, segment number seven in our discount bushcraft kit series. One thing that I wanted to talk about real fast at the end of this video, I had a few questions about a couple different things that I wanted to answer on this video. Um, the first one was a guy asked me, you know, what's the advantage of having that wooden handled axe over the metal axe? With a metal handled axe, I know from past experience that those metal handles are actually tubes. It's a metal tube. And they do have a tendency to break over time, especially if you're putting them through some really rough use. I would much rather have a hickory handle that I can replace if I have to in the woods with a hickory handle or an oak handle or whatever I can manufacture. If that handle happens to break, you're not going to hurt the head any. So it just gives me that advantage in the future. The other question I had was, when it comes to wool blankets, number one, how can you tell if you have a 70-30 wool blanket, 70% wool, 30% polyester fiber, or whether you have a 100% wool blanket? The only thing I can tell you with that, it's very hard to tell by feel or touch. Um, you almost have to take some scrapings off that blanket, some fuzz, and burn it. And if it seems to melt, then you know you've got some polyester in there. If it just burns, then you know you've got full wool fibers in there. And that's probably the easiest way to tell. Um, the other question I had about the wool blankets was, um, why does wool itch versus wool that doesn't itch? And the answer to that is, is that wool fibers have a diameter size, a micron size they call it. And the thicker the microns are, the thicker diameter it is, the more scratchy it is. That's why I like merino wool and things like that that come from Australia that are very fine fibrous wools. Uh, I think those are less than, I think they, they recommend less than 10 microns, if I remember right, or less than 7 for garment quality. So the wool blankets that you get a lot of times from overseas, like the Italian wool blanket, will itch a little bit at first because there's thicker wool fibers in it. It's not made with as high a grade of wool. But if you wash that in, in like a, a cold water solution in your washing machine and dry it, and you can do that with 100% wool blankets, just dry it on cool air, and you put some fabric softener in that water, a lot of fabric softener in that water, when you wash it, it takes a lot of that itch away. And there are chemicals that you can add to wool to take the itch away as well that you can buy online. So I just wanted to answer a couple of those questions real fast at the end of this video. My name is Dave Canterbury from the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for the seventh in our series of Discount Bushcraft Kit. We'll be back with another video soon. We'll see you later, guys.